Welcome back to week one, video three, where we are going to be looking at the geography of the world's oceans. And specifically, we are going to be looking at sea surface, what oceans exist, where they exist, some different climate zones, what the sea floor looks like, and also we're going to zoom in on what's happening here in the Pacific Northwest. So sea surface, if you look up in your textbook, there's some great maps that show you some of the major oceans, such as the Atlantic Ocean and the east coast of the United States, uh, the Pacific Ocean, which is what Oregon and Washington um, bump up to, also the largest and deepest ocean on the planet. Then we have the Indian Ocean, the Arctic Ocean, and the Southern Ocean. So these are all the major large bodies of water that exist on the planet, and in each of these different oceans we have some varying circulation patterns in these oceans and also we're not limited to these five major oceans There's some smaller oceans and seas such as the Mediterranean the Red Sea that we'll be looking at in more detail further on in this course so these oceans you can tell they uh, wrap from the equator some of them and go all the way up towards the northern latitudes very cold environment so they kind of stretch different climate zones. And those climate zones, you can see here. So in each of these different zones, we have different conditions. We have warm conditions, we have wet conditions, we have dry conditions, we have very, very frigidly cold conditions. So this map is showing you the different Köppen classification scheme zones that exist for the planet. And there's lots and lots of di different ones that you can see here. But what I want you to get from this is a general gist of the um, different climates that exist on the planet. So the green areas, you can see they're all located around zero degrees around the equator. So the equator, very warm, very wet environment. So we have lots of tropical rainforests that exist in that, um, in that latitude. So we move further away to the, for, to the north and to the south. You start to see some um, yellows and browns starting to pop up. That's is showing you more arid environment. So things are getting a little bit drier as you move further away from the equator. And then when we get up further to the north, you can see some dark brown areas. Those are the more temperate environments where we actually have um, four seasons. You have a winter where we have snow on the ground or summers where it gets pretty warm, um, maybe 80, 90 degrees in the summertime. And um, New York State, where I'm from, is an example of one of these uh, temperate environments where we have those different seasons that exist. And our last chunk that I want you to, to look at are the polar areas and the high alpine areas, which are represented by the pinks and the whites on this map. So in general, your polar environments, cooler temperatures, oceans are going to be cooler at those latitudes around the equator, the tropical, the greens, warmer ocean temperatures. Um, at those locations. And then also in these warmer areas, we have warmer ocean temperatures, we end up having more evaporation out of those ocean basins. So just to give you an idea of what the temperature looks like around the globe, so here you can see a very uh, similar kind of map. You got North America right over here, South America, and then you can see the temperature variations as you go from the equator, zero degrees, nice reds, to the polar areas and towards the um, top and the bottom of that map you can see that we get into more blues and uh, those temperatures are going to be in Celsius as you go from um, the equator out to the pole so you see that um, nice temperature variation that we see in each of these ocean basins so what does a sea floor look like and here's a good map showing you uh, some of the different sea surface elevations that exist throughout this ocean basin. Um, and the usually places that are um, kind of the darker blues on this map show you deeper environments. And then the Reds, oh, this is not the right image, is it? So
so uh, what so what we're gonna do now is take a look at the elevation of the sea floor and what I have for that is an actual uh, sea floor map created by Frank Grenshaw who is um, the author of your lab manual and the media that you're gonna see throughout this course so here uh, we can see the general elevation of the entire globe, not just the ocean basins, but also for the actual sea surface and uh, above sea level. So if I kind of scroll around here, you can see I'm at about a little below sea level. We see that um, elevation highlighted around the continents, we call this the continental shelf. We get out uh, to more deeper water, and not, as, not a whole lot. Um, until we get, we see here, we see some of our mid-ocean ridges highlighted in the middle of these oceans. And then as I keep going deeper and deeper, we should see more and more of that white, and that's going to be our ocean floor, the, what's called the abyssal plain. And then we get further out here in these deeper environments, not a whole lot of areas this deep. Um, just some, some bits and pieces spread out around the globe. So overall, we've got um, elevation around 0 to negative 5, maybe negative 6 or 7 um, kilometers below sea level. So the majority of our oceans, are get, our basins, are going to be in this negative 5 range that you see here. The second thing we're going to take a look at are our continental margins. So do we have a passive margin versus an active margin? And then we're going to get into some of these different seafloor features. So active versus passive, well what that refers to is plate tectonics and we'll do a brief overview right now and then we'll get into more detail with plate tectonics in a few weeks. So the earth is broken up into different plates, the earth's surface. So we can see this map here, uh, we've got North America right in the center here uh, of the North American plate. And you can see all the major ones, the African plate, the Eurasian plate, the Pacific plate. And what's happening is these plates are moving around, they're bumping together, they're pulling apart, they're sliding past one another. And where we have the edge of a continent corresponding to a plate boundary, we call that an active margin. For instance, if we take a look at this map, it's a little different. We see on the east coast of the United States, we have the Atlantic Ocean, we have the east coast of the United States, but we don't see any plate boundary corresponding with the edge of that continent. So because there's no active tectonic boundary, we call that a passive coastline. In places such as the west coast of the United States, along the Cascade Range, San Andreas Fault, also down along the west coast of South America, we see that that continental boundary corresponds to a plate boundary. So we call that an active plate boundary. So we have active plate tectonics occurring on that specific coastline. And a lot of times, well, the, some of the features that we see on these coastlines directly corresponds to, is this an active or a passive margin? So some of these different plate boundaries that we can see on the Earth's surface, we have convergent, where we have two plates colliding. So right here in the center, we have divergent plate boundaries where plates are moving apart. Those are usually at the center of our oceans. And then we have transform plate boundaries where they're sliding horizontally past one another. So those are our main plate boundaries uh, that we see um, in the ocean basin. So when we see places where we have convergent plate boundaries, that's where one plate is usually being forced below another, and we end up seeing trenches that can be pretty deep in some locations. Where our plates are pulling apart, this is where we have a break in the crust, we have magma rising to the surface, and we end up with what's called a ridge, our mid-ocean ridge in that environment, and we tend to see volcanoes spread along that ridge. And also, along those ridges, if we go from the center of that ridge and outwards, we tend to see that the age of the crust is kind of mirror images of each other. So if we take a look at the Atlantic Ocean, follow my cursor down, and this red stripe in the center of the Atlantic, 
that is a mid-ocean ridge. That's where two plates are actively pulling away from each other. And those red colors correspond to younger ages. So the closer you are to that divergent boundary, the younger the crust is. If we move out further and further away from that boundary on both sides, towards North America and towards Africa, you can see we get into greens and we start to get into blues. We get into much older crust. And that's because those two continents used to be smack dab against each other. And they were pulled apart by this divergent boundary. And we'll go into more detail with plate boundaries and, and <clears throat> ages and whatnot in a few weeks. So some of these features that we see on the ocean floor, well, this is a good figure kind of overviewing all of the different types you can see. Your book goes into some great detail, great images and diagrams for you to look through. So there's a few different features. We've got the continental shelf, and that is this kind of shallow sea area that's right next to the land. And that continental shelf tends to have continental crust um, right uh, in that actual rock material. When we move away from that con continental shelf, that shallow area, things drop off. We call that the continental slope. So we're getting from the continental crust and we're moving out into the oceanic crust. As you keep moving out, you see this a flat environment. That's the abyssal plain which makes up the majority of our ocean floors. And if we keep moving it further and further toward the center here, what we see is this mid-ocean ridge in the very center. So things are still pretty deep below sea level, but we tend to have a little bit of a rise in elevation right at that very center of that mid-ocean ridge. Some other features you can see on here are uh, submarine canyons. So we have a spot where there's a deep canyon underneath the water. We can see things called seamounts, where we had some kind of volcanic activity creating a volcanic island. And then a guyot, which is where we have the surf, the top kind of chunk of that seamount eroded away. So just to give you an idea of, kind of the general feet below sea level and, or meters, whichever way you want to think about it, where each of these features exist, our continental shelf, pretty shallow within the first 200 meters of the ocean. Continental slope goes down to about 500 meters or so, and then our abyssal plain, where you see the words ocean basin written, about 600 meters. And then we've got um, deep trenches that can get as, as deep as 11,000 meters in some places. So this is just a general topography of, of uh, these different environments. So what does this look like if we were to take a chunk of the Earth's surface? Well, NOAA has put together this great diagram showing you, um, well, map really, of satellite imaging of the ocean floor. And what I have here are some arrows pointing you in the direction of each of these features. So we can see the continental shelf, so the very shallow portions of the ocean, so the kind of teal colors. The continental slope, that steep drop off. Continental rise is kind of right before we start ramping up towards the continental shelf. We can see the Puerto Rico Trench, one of these deep areas, has that kind of darker blue color. Abyssal Plain, that wide flat area um, in the center of that ocean. And then we can see that mid ocean ridge or rift, whatever uh, term you want to use, right in the center of that Atlantic Ocean. So as we go from the uh, continent above sea level, things um, stay pretty shallow for a little while, then things drop off quite a bit, flatten out, and then we can head out towards that um, mid-Atlantic ridge, or in some cases you might hit one of these trenches. So what the heck is happening in the Pacific Northwest? Well, hopefully you're f a little bit familiar with um, how unique and awesome this area is. We have um, all three different plate boundaries in our one little zone of the Pacific Northwest. We have a convergent plate boundary, which you can see labeled as the Cascadia subduction zone line on the right figure, and by this red line paralleling the coast of Oregon and Washington, and this other figure showing the earthquakes over the last 30 days. We have um, a divergent plate boundary here. There's a few of them, the Explorer Ridge. We have the Juan de Fuca Ridge, the Gorda Ridge. Those correspond to this chunk of red, 
this chunk of red and this one here. And then we have these um, fracture zones where we have the plates sliding horizontally past each other and they're represented by these fracture zones that you see. And those are these lines that are uh, perpendicular to those, those divergent rifts. So in our neck of the woods we've got crazy plate tectonics uh, which also create lots of volcanoes, so our Cascades, Mount Hood, Mount St. Helens, Mount Rainier, and along with that, those volcanoes, we also get earthquakes. And this image down here is showing you the earthquakes over the last 30 days. Pretty significant amount of earthquakes. <clears throat> Next week, we're going to look uh, learn a little bit more about the rocks and sediments that are present in our neck of the woods. So we'll kind of pause on that until next week. We also see, uh, here's just some more detailed um, diagram showing you the actual plate boundaries that exist, the Cascadia subduction zone and the Juan de Fuca plate that is being forced below the North American plate into the divergent in red, the transform in blue, and the convergent in yellow. And then you can see those volcanoes that are being produced uh, on land in the Cascade Range um, from that subduction and then at the mid-ocean ridges that you see out in the ocean because that's where we have those plates split apart. So if we were to label each one of these areas, what we can see here are some seamounts on the sea floor. We can see the continental shelf, that shallow area right off of the um, continent and continental shelf where things drop off quite a bit. The trench in this image we can't really see so much. It's filled with a lot of sediment so it tends to have a more of a, a flat look to it. So it kind of matches that abyssal plane. Uh, we also can see things called submarine channels which you can see right about here sinuously leading towards that fracture zone. And we've got our mid-ocean rift and our fracture zones as well. So the other features that we have present in the Pacific Northwest are submarine canyons. So we have these deep, um, long channels that exist, and they tend to be um, right off the edge of some of the uh, major rivers, like the Columbia River, for example. So we have the Astoria Canyon, which is literally right off of that uh, mouth of the Columbia River. Kind of looks like it could be an extension of that river. And then on the abyssal plain, what has built up there is what's called the Astoria fan. Basically, this is a fan shape of sediments that was deposited in this um, location with kind of the handle of the fan as that uh, channel. So in lab this week, we're going to take a look at some of these uh, different ocean features, label them on some maps, and uh, explore a little bit of the topography of our oceans. So just to kind of review and wrap up what we talked about, so we went over what oceanography is, how it works, why it's important, what some of the main ideas are in oceanography, and we looked at the geography of the world's oceans, some of the main features that we see, and what's happening in the Northwest. So I'll see you in lab.